the max focus. Xbox. Please, please, please. Uh, okay, I'll play Xbox in another room. Alright girls, enjoy your movie. Time for Daddy to play some more Xbox. Now, does that last scenario seem very familiar? Maybe you have your own scenario at home on why you need to have Xbox streaming set up. Uh, quite simply, um, there's multiple uses for myself. Uh, previously, you would used to have to pack up the Xbox or unplug it, disconnect it from whichever room it was in and physically reconnect it to this TV so I can continue playing or alternatively have a second Xbox around your home. So I don't think everyone's rich enough to have an Xbox connected to every TV. So this is where a portable device like this comes in very handy, easy to maneuver, and plus has many other functionalities outside of Xbox streaming. So today I'm gonna to run you through what you'll need uh, in order to you know have a similar scenario to myself and have a similar outcome first of all um, most importantly an Xbox so make sure you've got a Xbox whether it be an old version new version up to date whatever it'll all connect to your network now one major thing I will point out if like me you have a original version of Xbox, uh, you don't have Xbox One S or the likes of, in order to get the Bluetooth controller connecting with your PC, you will require an Xbox One S controller. So the original controllers like this, I've got about four or five of them, none of them will actually connect via Bluetooth to the Windows PC. You actually specifically need a win uh, Xbox controller that allows this to happen. So I'll drop a link uh, in the comments below and show you how you can detect whether your the controller you have does or doesn't have Bluetooth and will or, want, will, or will not work. Um, I don't want you wasting your time trying to connect your Bluetooth, your controller to the Bluetooth when it actually doesn't support it. So please keep in mind you will need a Bluetooth Xbox controller. So all that being said, apart from the Xbox and the correct controller, you will also need an uh, Asus Vivo Stick PC. So um, you can pick these up online, uh, readily available. Now these devices come fully equipped with Windows 10, um, so pretty much anything you can do on your normal PC, you can almost uh, do on this obviously without the processing power but that's not what's required here because we're streaming the video content so apart from all this obviously these devices so the Xbox and the Vivo stick PC obviously have to connect to a gateway being a uh, router of some sort in your home or you may have a modem router uh, I myself for this demo I'm using a AC 1900 dual band modem router so you can also pick these up online i will take advantage of um, doing this video on a 5 gigahertz channel so both my uh, xbox and my vivo pc are connected uh, wirelessly to a 5 gigahertz channel so yeah i'll run you through a few things on you know how we can get this set up 
Now, as you can see from the uh, setup I have in my living room here, uh, having an Xbox uh, placed in my living room is, you know, almost impossible without actually investing in having some some form of shelving or furniture here to to hold the Xbox device. But with the power of the Vivo Stick, uh, we've got the added functionality of hiding an Xbox using Xbox streaming in your home. So as you can see, we've uh, got our stick all set up and running here. So basically once you take it out of the box, you will be uh, forced to do all your latest Windows updates, which is great because that automatically puts the Xbox software onto the device. Now I'll show you a few uh, tips today that uh, can link your Vivo stick and your Microsoft Bluetooth controller uh, to work in sync with uh, multiple gaming platforms including Xbox and, and PC. So uh, first demonstration I'll uh, run you through is uh, basically how to set up your Bluetooth. Okay so now connecting our Xbox One S Bluetooth controller to our Windows based Vivo Stick PC is quite simple. It's the same way you'd connect any Bluetooth device to a Windows based PC. So I'll just quickly run, run you through the setup process. So first of all, we just wanna make sure our Bluetooth uh, settings are enabled and turned on on the device. So what we do then is we get our Vivo remote app uh, that we have installed on our Android phone or device or whatever you may use in your home. And we can go down to the Windows start key, uh, what used to be the start key. So now we've got the settings option. So we click onto settings and this brings up here and we click over onto devices there. So once we're into devices, on the left hand side here, you'll see Bluetooth. So just click on that option and it will tell you if it's on or off or if, uh, what devices are ready to pair in your area. Uh, this is when we will pull out our trusty Xbox controller and power on the unit pushing the Xbox key in the middle. So this will start to flash slowly um, but what we can do is hold down the button on the top here right where I'm pointing my finger hold this down and you'll see the light start flashing quite erratically. Now our Windows PC will automatically start to look for other devices and you can see here Xbox wireless controller, so we just click on that and we say pair and it will automatically install the driver, so it's pretty much plug and play. Uh, very simple, like I said, like every other Bluetooth device. And then once this is uh, all connected to the PC, we're ready to start our Xbox streaming. So in the next step of the video, I'll run you through uh, just a quick guide on connecting to your Xbox. Now we have our Bluetooth controller connected, we get to the fun part of uh, trying to play some Xbox through our little mini PC here. So this should basically emulate your Xbox physically being in the room, uh, but still being where it normally would be. So it still operates and runs from where you would normally have it. Uh, you just utilize your network to pull the picture from the Xbox to uh, the screen here. So first of all, uh, now we've got all our Windows updates installed, so that happens on the uh, setup process. So we could type Xbox in here or ask Cortana if you have it set up. Now I don't have Cortana set up, so we'll just go to the uh, trusty old menu options. So you'll find Xbox available in your menu, again, only if you've done all your Windows updates. So any uh, Windows PC that you may have at home, make sure it's fully updated and you should have Xbox option and you should be able to stream uh, your Xbox should you have one. Now, I must mention that the Xbox must be on the same network as the stick PC, obviously in order for the two to communicate together. So we'll see our Xbox app loading up here. Um, it's quite simple, brings you to your home page. So Everything you see in this sort of area here is your, your home splash screen. Um, you know, I've got my account logged in through my Xbox. Um, 
Now, to find the devices, uh, there's many options here, so you can check on your stats and all that sort of thing through Xbox. That's just pulled from Xbox Cloud. Now, the real nitty gritty of this software comes down to this part here. So we'll go over here and we'll click on here, and this will find all your Xboxes in your home, in your environment. Now, as you remember, I got kicked out of the room and was in the middle of a game of FIFA. So I've simply got up, paused my game of FIFA and left the room. What I can then do is come into another room, turn on my Windows software, and once I connect and find my device, it'll you know come up in the menu here. So this is an Xbox. If you've got multiple Xboxes at home, you may see multiple options here. I only have one, hence why we're doing this. So here you've got uh, many options. You can test streaming to see what sort of quality your home network can, is capable of running the streaming at. Now, I believe there's four types of um, streaming options, high, medium, you know, low, and then, oh my God, Nintendo. So <coughs> with this, we, we wanna focus just on uh, getting you up and running here. I'll let you test it based on your environment yourself. But it's quite simple. We found our Xbox, all I have to do is click on the stream button. So I don't even need the mouse anymore. I can control it all through my Xbox controller and I click stream. Once I click stream, it should bring the picture through my network onto my screen. And as you can see, it's like I've got an Xbox physically connected in the room. All my sound, all my options, everything's great. Now, I actually have this set up on a, on a high um, streaming. So if, if you wanna see those options again um, on, on what sort of quality you're streaming at, all you need to do is bring up your mouse and you'll see options here to stop streaming or you can select your change your quality here. So as we click on this, you've got very high, high, medium and low. Sorry, I missed the very high option before. Um, I'm using the very high option here, so um, you know I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Again, you may have to change this setting depending on your environment. Um, I really can't say too much on, on that side of things. For my home environment, this works fantastic. So there's no hidden tricks. I'm using an Xbox, a modem router, a Vivo PC, and a Bluetooth controller. So you can see I can quite easily go back into my game where I've left off and put it on pause, uh, go back and resume match, and it's exactly where I left it off. Now, to me, this video quality looks pretty decent. Um, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll have a, a good three or four games, full games of FIFA here and test it out. Um, and I also, you know, maybe get some fast action games. Uh, I may demo some, maybe some Killer Instinct or something like that. That's really fast, babe, move, fast movement that should really test the, the network quality and, and any lag that should come through should really appear in those really fast games where, you know, you've got one frame per second to, to make a decision. So. If I'm going to be missing a frame, I'll notice it. So I'll, I'll write, write up some reviews on, on that and my quality. Um, and I'll, for the next stage of the video, um, I'll also run you through the, the capabilities of streaming Steam PC games through the mini PC. So not only can you use this device as uh, streaming for Xbox, you can also stream your PC games uh, with all that grunt through to this device, um, very similar to this. Okay, and as promised, on to the next part of our video, a, a quick demo on uh, Steam streaming in your home. So what we have here is uh, a Vivo Stick PC. On this device, we have uh, Steam set up and logged in with my personal account. So in my office, I also have my gaming PC. Uh, in this gaming PC, uh, Steam also logged in and uh, set up and logged in. So that will act as the main hub for your uh, game operating. 
So your game will still operate on your main gaming PC as per normal, but what the Vivo Stick PC does is has the ability to pull the image through to your home theater room or whatever room you, you, know, you decide to put it in. So for myself, uh, I don't feel like, you know, playing in the office tonight, it's quite a bit lonely out there. So I've decided to bring, uh, you know, my PC into my living room. Now, normally in order to do this, you'd have to unplug, you know, five to 10 cables from the back of your PC, find a PowerPoint in here, set it all up, uh, get it up and running, have a keyboard and mouse, etc., whatever. Um, the Vivo PC takes away the need for that. So what we have here is the ability to use my GTX 970 on my main PC in my living room through this portable device. So I'll give you a quick demo here. So tonight I feel like playing a little bit of Doom. So having Steam set up on my main PC and this PC and logged in on both PCs, You'll see on the, uh, this PC here, the Vivo stick, I have the ability to stream. Now if I click this button, it will start to load Doom on my main gaming PC. However, pulling the image through this device and onto this screen here. Now the added benefit of um, you know, playing Steam games and that sort of thing is keyboard and mouse. Yes, you can use that Bluetooth, by, by all means, by Bluetooth, mouse and keyboard and sit back on your lounge and, and enjoy. Um, I myself do like to play some PC games using a controller. This is the added benefit of the Xbox One S controller coming into play. Now normally to operate something like this you'd need a Steam box uh, plus a Steam controller. Now that would set you back way would have, you know, 180 to, to $200 and really limit you to only use that functionality. Now for the Vivo Stick PC it retails around the 195 mark in the market. So what you'll find here is, is extra value. You can stream both your Xbox and your PC through the one device, as well as having a, a full Windows environment to set up media centers such as Kodi or Plex or whichever you like in your favor. So I think in summary, the Vivo Stick PC gives very, very good value. So it's a very powerful unit in a small chassis. Um, it looks quite sleek. So if you don't want it on the side of your PC, the functionality of using the application for keyboard and mouse is fantastic. Um, you know, I, d I myself don't have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, so this, this comes in very handy as well for the media center functionality. But the real hero of this product is the fact that I can Xbox in any room in my house. I admittedly, I pl possibly play more console than I do PC, so the extra value for me here is the fact if if I want to play a sneaky game of FIFA before bed, I don't need to unplug it from the theater room and bring it into my bedroom. I can simply just whack this in a HDMI port, have this in bed with me, and away I go. So there's many scenarios, I'll let you think of yours, but if you'd like any more information on what you've seen or advice today, or more information on some of the, the hardware that I'm using, Please drop a line in the comments box and I'll be happy to help you out.